Good morning. God bless you on this Thursday morning. As we continue our series, Can You Relate? Today we're going to look at the prophet Nathan. Now, can you imagine this job? You are the one who's supposed to speak God's word to the people and to the king, whether that word is a word of blessing and encouragement, a promise of victory, or a warning about defeat. And now one day as you're praying and you feel God's spirit tugging on your heart, you are told and it's revealed to you that the king has sinned greatly, adultery and murder and the attempts to cover it up. And it's your job to go and talk to the king, the king who in a worldly sense has the authority to take your head or take your or simply take your life at any any by any means he decides. That's your job, not a fun task. And I imagine Nathan, as he prayed and prepared to go and confront the king, uh, had some processing of how do I approach this? And we hear this story in 2 Samuel chapter 12. The Lord sent Nathan to David. When he came to him, he said, There were two men in a certain town, one rich and the other poor. The rich man had a very large number of sheep and cattle, but the poor man had nothing except one little ewe lamb that he had bought. He raised it and it grew up with him and his children. It shared his food, drank from his cup, and even slept in his arms. It was like a daughter to him. Now a traveler came to the rich man, but the rich man refrained from taking one of his own sheep or cattle to prepare a meal for the traveler who had come to him. Instead, he took the ewe lamb that belonged to the poor man and prepared it for the one who had come to him. David burned with anger against the man and said to Nathan, As surely as the Lord lives, the man who did this must die. He must pay for that lamb four times over because he did such a thing and had no pity. Then Nathan said to David, You are the man. This is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says. I anointed you king over Israel, and I delivered you from the hands of Saul. I gave your master's house to you and your master's wives into your arms. I gave you all Israel and Judah. And if this had been too little, I would have given you even more. Why did you despise the word of the Lord by doing what is evil in his eyes? You struck down Uriah the Hittite with the sword and took his wife to be your own. You killed him with the sword of the Ammonites. Now, therefore, the sword will never depart from your house because you despised me and took the wife of Uriah the Hittite to be your own. This is what the Lord says. Out of your own household, I am going to bring calamity on you. Before your very eyes, I will take your wives and give them to one who is close to you. He will sleep with your wives in broad daylight. You did it in secret, but I will do this thing in broad daylight before all Israel. Then David said to Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. Nathan replied, the Lord has taken away your sin. You are not going to die. But because you have done this and shown utter contempt for the Lord, the son born to you will die. It was so easy for David to see the sin in somebody else and not be able to recognize his own. But when he's pronounced, when David himself pronounced the word of judgment, this man deserves to die. He was hooked. There was no way he could escape. And then Nathan simply had to explain the facts. David, you thought you covered it up. You thought it was hidden. But God knows everything and has revealed it all to me. I'm simply telling you the truth. And here's one of the beautiful things about David's heart. As wrong as he was, as evil as the things he did were, when confronted by the word of God and the truth, there's no lying, there's no blaming, there's no making excuses. There's a simple declaration and acknowledgement. I have sinned against the Lord. 
Now I want to ask you two questions. You know, can you relate to David? Have you sinned and carried in your heart the guilt of what you have done? Have you ever tried to cover up your wrong and hide it from those closest to you and maybe even from those who you have hurt? I would imagine the answer to that question on one level or another is yes. You know, in fact, the Word of God warns us if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But on another level, I'm going to ask you, can you relate to Nathan? Have you ever been called to be that voice of reason, to plead with someone when you see their sins are destroying their lives or hurting relationships and the people around them? Have you been the one who've had to reason with someone? Perhaps it's with substance abuse or perhaps with relationships that are inappropriate or destructive. Think of two scripture passages from Galatians chapter 6 verse 1. Brothers and sisters, if someone is caught in a sin, you who live by the Spirit should restore that person gently. What a gift, you know. When you do it, it's not with arrogance, it's not with self-righteousness, it's not talking down to other people, but we restore them gently by talking to them about the truth and reminding them about, about is what is right. In the book of James chapter 5, verse 13, it says, I mean, verse 19, it says, My brothers and sisters, if one of you should wander from the truth and someone should bring that person back, remember this. Whoever turns a sinner from the error of their ways will save them from death and cover over a multitude of sins. So here's some encouragements that perhaps as we live out our faith and we walk in the Spirit of the Lord, there may be times that we are called to take the role of Nathan in somebody else's life. And I want to just warn you, if that's the case, to remember to check your heart, to make sure you're not doing it with anger, when you're not speaking out of self-righteousness as though you're somehow spiritually up here and they're somehow down here. But when we talk, we speak as one sinner to another, as one person who has received grace and forgiveness through the sacrifice of Jesus, inviting another to come and experience the same grace that we ourselves depend on. It changes a lot with our words and our attitude that we convey when we approach it in that direction. But what a gift it is. Now, there are people in my life that I have asked to be Nathan for me, to speak into my life, to warn me, to confront me, to challenge me. And I've given them that, that authority, that permission. I've invited them, please, I trust you. Tell me the truth. If I'm being an idiot, I want to know about it. And as we talk today, I want to ask you, who is Nathan in your life? Is there someone that you've given that authority to, that you've extended that invitation? Look, you're my friend, you're a brother or a sister in Christ, I trust you. Help me walk faithfully with Jesus. We all need a Nathan in our life. And whether you are called to be that for someone else, that God will work out and he'll make that clear. And maybe you'll receive that invitation from one of your friends or your brothers and sisters in Christ. But I encourage you, if you don't have a Nathan, think of the people in your life that you know and trust that are walking with the Lord and perhaps pray about it and, at, and have a conversation with them and ask you to be and ask them to be your Nathan. So God bless you today as you think of David and his sin and Nathan as the one who restored him and announced to him God's word. God bless you.